think the fitness industry is ever changing, mm -hmm. you know, and it's really hard to pinpoint one thing that I'll be like, yep, definitely want to change that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think the stigma around like bodybuilding. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Fit Minds podcast on Spotify and obviously vlog on YouTube. We are here today with Chloe Barwick, the woman herself. Hi. Hello. In the flesh. <laughs> on the couch. We, <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> we live quite close together, so yeah, it was a big effort to get oh, you here. Yeah, you such drove, a hike. Drove a very long way. <laughs> um, special guest. Um, so... Today we're going to just talk some shit, really. There's been we're a lot of people good at doing that. Yeah, we do that anyway, yeah, yeah without <laughs> needing questions. Um, there's been a lot of people who have touched base um, and said they're actually excited for the podcast. Perfect. And I'm not even saying that. I've gotten messages going, I'm really keen to hear this. So. <laughs> oh, that's so much pressure. Uh, yeah, well, it's a lot of aspiring wellness competitors that we've got out there that, and, you know, I guess that want to see you know, the world from your perspective. Um, and in general as well, like even just, I've seen some, um, we had some questions from some boys, from some men. Yeah, our, like our mates. But yeah. <laughs> in the bodybuilding world, you know, female bodybuilding wellness is just such an impressive division to mm. compete in. So, you know, we'll touch on that. But before we get too deep into it, I would like to obviously introduce you to those who don't know who you are and what you're about. If you don't know who Chloe is, where the fuck are you? Like, yeah, where have you been? What What's heck? going on? <laughs> Living under a rock? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, gosh. Um, so, who are you? And obviously, aside from your name, and what are your accomplishments thus far? So, I am Chloe. I am a mother um, to a little five-year-old. Um, in terms of achievements, I won the overall Queensland title for wellness for NBA, and then I won two golds in wellness for ICN. I think it was fourth and fifth in sports model um, for ASEAN as well. Um, that was my first year of competing. So first yeah. time ever, first time ever. Um, and just went in and cleaned up with first yeah, and just, an overall. Just yeah, thanks. See thank ya. You. Bye. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, it wasn't wow. all smooth sailing, but mm. um, yeah. Uh, other than that, that's that's pretty much me. Yeah. Wow, okay. very impressive. Yeah. And sports was, did you do sports with, you did sports with NBA as well, didn't you? Did, yes, did we oh, I did, I got third. That's right, yeah. Um, and was second? I don't know, maybe it was a second. I'm I sure it was remember. a second. Anyway. Nice to know. <laughs> 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 me. I'm like, oh. It's weird because it was only just September last year, like it was yeah. quite recent. end of September. So you're the most recent overall NBA wellness winner and... Um, ICN two times gold mm -hmm. medalist yep. as well. So, yep. yeah, super exciting stuff. And it's like not many athletes will go into their first season and take out first. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I sort of went in expecting not to win. Yep. Um, just Do you because... hear that, guys? Don't, <laughs> don't go in expecting to win. <laughs> um, just purely and simply for the fact, like, oh, there was a lot of self doubt. Yep. Um, and I think that comes into play as well. Like, I was like, all right, like, you know, as my coach, it was always like, I'm not lean enough. I'm too big. I'm too small. Am I too lean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was a lot. There yeah. was a lot. Um, but, you yeah, know, it was, it was an, ex an experience, to mm. say the least, definitely. Mm. And I'm excited to do it all again. Do you think it shaped and changed you into the person you are today? Oh, absolutely. Like when, a um, little backstory, um, after I had my daughter, I went through some pretty nasty mental stuff, um, put on a lot of weight was sitting around 120 kilos. So I was I when you showed me when Chloe showed me the photos, I did not yeah. remotely recognize you. Unrecognizable. I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. You know, I just wouldn't have put the two people next to each other mm. and gone, yep, that's the same yeah. person. Like sometimes when I show people like my before and afters, people are like, that's not you. That was a new wild. Yeah. Like prove it. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> okay. But yeah, um, so... 120, you said. 120. Jeez. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, like, that's not, you know, me shaming people who are 120 oh, kilos. No, 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 no. But vast, it just, the, the vast difference mm. from... And coming from, like, growing up, I was always into my sports. I mm. was always, like, grew up in a 
pretty healthy eating household. Like, um, mm. so for me then to, to, go, the other to way. go the other way, like mm. it was a big diff. Like people, that I didn't want to go outside. I didn't want to, mm. so I was only 19. Yeah, when um, that happened, wow. Yeah, when I was when I had Sienna. Oh yeah. wow, okay, yeah. yeah. So I, was, I always forget the age. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. So like I was, I wouldn't want to go outside. I wouldn't want to see people that I went to school with. You know, like I shut myself off a lot because yeah. of the way I looked and how unhappy I was. Um, and then I basically I joined a fit stop. Mm-hmm. Um, did a six week challenge through them ended up losing about 10 kilos in six wow. weeks ended up taking, in six weeks taking out the women for women out there that's like fucking unheard of yeah 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 wow yeah i'm um, taking out first place for that so i was like oh. ah <laughs> that was your first big win yeah like in yeah, this, this pretty realm. much yeah. yeah getting that taste um mm-hmm. and i think it all started then from there and then mm-hmm. um joined the gym um had a PT trainer, was working with them, continued to just slowly chip away. Like, mm-hmm. I think that, that was the biggest thing for me, slowly, mm. doing it slowly. Mm. Like once I'd had that big first kilo st- 10 kilo stint, mm-hmm. it was then, all right, I'm at a place where I feel somewhat comfortable. Yep. Let's keep going. And you know, you, you knew you were capable too. Yeah, mm. exactly. And then I got um, back into sports again. Like I started playing rugby league. Nice. I would not want to face you on a field. <laughs> Your legs are insane. I would be like, oh, no, I'm I'll go, later, go, guys. <laughs> Sick or something. Yeah, it's um, wild. Rugby yeah. league. How'd you find that? It was really good. I loved it. Um, I actually ended up getting injured. Well, I went and played for the Sunshine Coast Falcons, which was really fun. We went to Bundy. Wow, we to Bundy. Um, Did you kick their butt? Because I'm from Bundy. <laughs> well, there was lots of different teams. Uh huh. But we, I think we ended up taking out. Oh, I don't really. My memory is shot. I'm like, yeah, that was a good time. There's people in Bundy watching this vlog and they're going, you didn't beat us. No. All right? No. I think we did pretty well. That's good. Yeah, yeah. no, it was, it was a good trip. It was a big road trip. So nice. it was lots of fun. Wow. Um, and then I ended up tearing my ACL, completely rupturing that's, it. That's, that's a huge injury. And tearing my meniscus. So And your meniscus. Yeah. I that's right, because we've talked about this and I wasn't, mm. now I'm kind of connecting the dots as to when the timeline was. Okay, yeah. 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 So, um... Footy was then out of the question, obviously. Mm. Um, had my op, and it was a year before I could get back out on the field again. And during that year was when I sort of really stuck my nose into the gym mm. um, and fell into some pretty unhealthy habits, if I'm being quite honest. Um, you know, I think once you start, as bad as it is to say, to get the attention, to get people being like, oh, look at you, you look great, what, what, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You sort of fall into that hole, um, like I was probably only eating like 1,300 calories yep. a day, tra- yeah, I've been overtraining. Yeah. Um, I was working for myself at the time, so I was just, everything revolved around the gym mm. and eating as little as possible mm. and... Um, yeah, and it, when you're getting praised for it as well, because most of society doesn't really understand where that toxic line mm-hmm. is. So they're kind of all they're seeing is the external. Yeah. And, and I, I guess it's hard from an outsider's perspective as well, because they want to know what sort of mental state that's right. I was in. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, all right, well, what's she doing? Like, And we also don't know as well that that's, you know, that positive feedback loop of mm, you're losing weight, you're doing amazing mm, can backfire. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I lost a lot of muscle. Um, mm. as well which was sad coming from someone who'd always had solid legs wow. um, and then obviously with the knee off as well like of course, yeah. I couldn't wait there for six weeks which was really atrophy. hard yep. um, and then um, I met my partner mm-hmm. and he's a bodybuilder so sort of I'd always thought I'm denied about it and um, then met him and he sort of gave me that little extra, like, come on, you can do it. And mm. then asked around for some coaches and then your lovely name got mentioned um, <laughs> by a couple of people. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. And initially when I'd messaged you, I was like, hey, I'm thinking about it. I'm not too sure. Um, let's just start, see where to get the ball moving. And um, then all of a sudden I'm getting a message from Mariah being like, all right, it's time to start prep. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. I okay. take people very seriously when they have goals. I think too, when you came to me, 
I looked at you like a little gold mine because yeah. I was just like, you know, coaches know. Yeah. When we see a physique, it wouldn't matter if you're in your off season, whether you, you know, you're dieting, you're not dieting. We can see muscle mass from mm. a mile away. Yeah. And I was like rubbing my hands. Like, I was like, <laughs> yeah, let's get into this. Like, because I, I think that you know, having an athlete that already has a pretty good foundation to build mm. off of is just so valuable. And like, you know, we still obviously have to put work in. You've got to put work yeah. in, but. Um, it's much more favourable than when you've got someone coming to you. I want to compete, and you're like, "Damn, we've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> How long have we got?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I looked at you, and I honestly felt blessed. Like I was like, oh, "Yes, thank you." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a quality competitor. <laughs> we love these. Yeah, that was uh, great. We had a, we had a, like, we did probably I think it was like six months of a little, little, a little build, little build. And the, the thing is, too, that's. That circumstance is so once off, like mm. because I have so many people coming to me like I want to compete and you know start prep in six months. Most of the time, like ninety five percent of the time, they do not have enough muscle. Yeah. You came to me and I was like, "Fuck it, let's do a little bit of here and a little bit of there, and mm. you know just tweak things, get you into some good habits as well." Like yeah. it's not even about you know because as well, I think there was this big. Um, Oh, we had this period of time there where you were like really struggling to eat, look like a bit more food, right? Oh, yeah. And it was like, so then we kind of edged you up to that point. And then I think you started to see the benefit in yeah. it and you were like, oh, I've got energy now. And yeah. like, you know. Yeah, because I think coming from the mentality <clears throat> where I almost feared food. Yep. Um, and like weight gain and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I was like, ah, ah, she wants me to eat Freaking more. out, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't want to, and I think coming from someone who was bigger yep. um the fear of gaining weight and seeing that little bit of extra body fat you start to second guess yourself you're like am I falling back into my old habits mm. am I going to end up where I was however many years ago it was it's traumatic yeah it, it's triggering it's really mm-hmm. triggering and um I think it's just a lot of self-talk and talking with you yeah. and learning different ways of being like you know what I'm never going to be that woman no. you know? I'm never going to be that person again and um, you know I'm, too much now. Yeah, and I know yeah. it. And it's, I know like a lot in terms of who I am. Yeah, and what I stand for. And yeah, yeah. No, it's completely different circumstances. Mm. I think that's a big thing. Is that like, you know, I often have this discussion with people about like their previous self, their prior mm. self. And some people go like, I wish I was like my prior self, or they go the other way and they go, I don't even want to be that person. And it, you never will be, no. you know, because each chapter of your life, each day, each week presents completely different circumstances. It all evolves over time. Yeah, for sure. And so now, you you know, you're in a relationship with your partner who's, you know, in a very similar headspace and mindset yeah. to you. You've got a coach who's invested in you yeah. that you get along with. So, and then obviously for yourself, developmentally, you yeah. know, when you came to me, I'd say that you've come, you know, miles yeah. ahead from where you were Absolutely. again. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good to sit back and acknowledge that. Yeah, absolutely. We haven't really even talked about that because we've been coaching together for, almost, is it a year and a half? Yeah. Like, I think it was January. Uh, when did you come to me? It was like, oh, maybe September. Not last year, the year before? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't Christmas yet. No. I know that much. It was, no, yeah, it was a bit before a bit that. A before maybe. Christmas. Oh, yeah. yeah. August, or. Yeah, around then. To go then. back and look. Yeah. About, about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found that, you know, with my clients that have been on for that long, it only gets better. Like, yeah. it only progresses and gets better. And yeah. they, they learn so much over that period of time. And for yourself as well, like, even just the general consensus of, like, things we wanted to work on. Even, like, we have chats still about stuff. Like, yeah. a couple of days ago about your training, like, I really want to work on this. It's like, yeah, cool, let's do yeah. this. Yeah. You don't stop like there's no. no sort of hesitation in that that next step yeah and I think that's important to have especially obviously after competing because yeah. yeah yeah there's always that that little bit of a dip but we'll get mm-hmm. stuck into some questions now <laughs> ramble a bit. <laughs> no we can ramble forever honestly it's funny because the best podcasts are often that just yeah. you know um free-flowing conversation Chloe and I are also very good friends outside of coaching, which it's actually really, you know, I say to a lot of people to find a balance to have a friend who you can also coach is very hard to do. Mm -hmm. But the great thing is that, you know, like we know the separate relationships. So like when we're talking coaching, we're talking coaching. And then when we have friendship stuff, we have friendship stuff. And it's like, they're just, 
they're separate but also kind of intertwined. But yeah, but I think we respect boundaries. Oh god, yeah. Like yeah. when we're at the gym, like it's yeah. so good because I love Chloe because I was like <laughs> when I first started coaching her because we train at the same gym and like has nothing to do with our coaching because I honestly wouldn't even know I know Chloe at the gym. Mm. I don't even talk to her much. Like I might have a little quick little yeah. friend <clears throat> friend chat, but yeah. we don't talk about work stuff at all. No. And I just not yep. yeah. And I remember I started coaching. I was like. <laughs> I remember messaging you going, thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. For not interrupting my workout. Yeah. And you, you were like, I would hate it if someone did that to me. Yeah. Well, I've actually been told I look like a bitch when I'm at the gym. Alex says your resting bitch face is intense. Yeah. And I was like, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even mean to. I think because when I'm at the gym, it's my time. And like, that was the biggest thing that I learned going through my journey mm. was the gym was my space. Yeah. You know, and I was able to focus on absolutely nothing else that was going in my life but the workout getting it done mm. getting my shit done and getting out that's right you know? um so when i'm in the gym yeah i i promise i am friendly i promise <laughs> i am friendly you don't have to be honestly i look because I, I was saying to alex the other day i said i love chloe everything about chloe is the best yeah. because um i really like people who are not afraid to just be themselves and that they don't you don't have to like put anything on yeah and so he's like, oh, he, he always thinks that you're mad with him. Yeah, and, yeah. And I'm like, no, yeah. she's not mad with yeah. you. Well, she's doing her own thing. It was funny the other day at the gym, um, I saw Dan and I like smiled at him. He's like, is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what have I done? And I'm like, Come You on. should use that. <laughs> hey, like you, all of you yeah. are in trouble. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is I really that bad? I, I think it's good. I, the great thing is I get you and you get me. Yeah. So we understand each other. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like the amount of times I say, is she all right? And I'm like, she's fucking fine. Leave her alone. <laughs> like, go away. Why are you all so concerned about how Chloe is doing? She's just in, like, yeah. in the zone. Mm. And, and I think that if we, sometimes if we, because I'm very bad for it, like letting people kind of take my time up at gym and having a chat and whatever mm-hmm. and vice versa. Like sometimes I can do it to people too. Mm. I think if we get stuck in that, then it, it kind of then we don't feel like we can go there and have it as an outlet. So it's like, it is an outlet. We're yeah. all there for the same reason. Yes, we have a little bit of a chat, but yeah. So anyway, Chloe doesn't hate you. No, just, I promise I don't hate she you. She just takes it. And like, that's why you look the way you do. Your amazing fucking leg mass and yeah. shit. It's because like, you just get in and you just train. Mm. And yeah, you but I actually had yeah. someone, um, is it Megan? Yeah, Megan, yeah. Megan, 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 Megan yeah. yeah. She actually, um, I was filling up my water. She comes over. She's like, you're an animal. She's like, just the way you train. Like, she's a wellness competitor. Yeah, she is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in IFBB. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, like in the big scheme of things, like I have a lot of respect for wellness competitors. Mm. Um, so, yeah, to get that type of compliment. Yeah. I was like, fuck yeah. I train yeah. I like a bitch. <laughs> oh, even some dudes, they're like, you, you outlift a lot of the blokes mm. in that gym. Well, my legs are, I just like to point out that my legs are actually bigger than Josh's at the moment. <laughs> Make that, make that so Josh is going to do men's physique. Then. I know. Did you know they brought out <laughs> a men's well? Don't watch this vlog, Josh. This was one of the questions. This is one of my questions. Uh. Is Josh going to compete in the men's wellness? <laughs> Did you have you seen that they brought that out? Like, uh, I, actually, that's, this should be one of the topics on this podcast because I don't, I don't want to touch it. I'm not going to because I could get in trouble. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I sent it to Alex and I said, baby, you can't agree for you. <laughs> <laughs> he does a great booty pop and he yeah. was like, oh, yeah, I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. like, but why isn't he just wearing trunks? And I was like, because he wants to be pretty. He reminded me of a centaur. Yeah. For those who don't know what the hell we're going on about, they're, in the bodybuilding world, everyone knows because like, you know, but um, <laughs> this very beautiful man, mm. like incredible physique, actually, to be honest, yeah, it shits all over yeah. a lot of yeah. female Some physiques. of the, wo- like, yeah. Like, as in, and I'm not, because obviously he's a man with a lot of muscle mass, but like, ooh, did, like symmetry and everything. Like, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah. I was very impressed. Yeah. But he reminded me of a centaur, because you know, like centaurs have like the different bottom half to the top, yeah. like as in, yep. Because he had like no bikini on. And so yeah. he, it, been... it, it plays with your mind a little bit. You're like, hang <laughs> on. I think too, because we're also like, you've got to forgive us. We're in a generation where we're in this crossover of, you know, this, there is lots of different types of identities and, and yeah. everything. And it's very similar to when the baby boomers went through the situation of like, you know, there was that transition of, you know, I shouldn't say acceptance because that's the terrible word for it, but of change in culture. Mm, definitely. And so we're in, we're in this weird spot because like it's happened while we've been 
getting older. And so mm. I think there's a lot of millennials that are like, yeah, I don't know what to think or do about this situation. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't impact us, the division. No. It's not like, it's you know, it's men competing against men, which is actually quite fair. Because mm-hmm. I think the big problem we've got in the industry at the moment is like, you know, men, people, men, men who yeah. are competing in women's sports who've made the transition but haven't and there's yeah. this, like and it this is nothing against people who are like you know yeah. who do that but well, so i actually have um a, a, a good friend that i've known for a lot of years um he yep. um used to play in the footy team okay <clears throat> um since the end of the year um he's now transitioned oh, transitioned yeah yeah and he can't play yeah um and it's just one of those things like you i i yeah let's not yeah, yeah, it's it and it it's, it is a whole nother topic. It's just something that has been such a difficult topic to to cover. But also, I think you know, the way I see it is that um, you know if they're repeatedly beating mm. other women, yeah, um, it, it might be that okay, cool. Yes, I, I'm all for equality, absolutely. But from the genetic advantage, it's just so hard for the women mm. and to be in that situation. Mm. And it's probably hard for the competitor who's winning as well because they're like, oh shit. You know, am I winning because of the previous yeah. testosterone? Am I winning because I'm, you know, I and it's, it's such a be such a, div- yeah, a divide. Yeah, we could go on for hours. It's a weird topic, anyway. Mm. Um, so I guess I don't really have a stance on that. <laughs> 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 I just go, that's a very interesting division. You look yeah. like a very pretty man. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And good on you. Yeah. Men's wellness. Yeah. Um, is that actually called men's wellness? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think it's um in Brazil. I think I saw it. Oh, right, Brazilian okay. In yeah. IFBB. Be- be- beautiful. Yeah. Brazilian man. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> jealous. I'm very jealous. We're actually just jealous. We are jealous. So much envy. Um, so questions from the crowd. Let's get stuck into these mm-hmm. ones. After, now we've had a ramble. Um, I mean, this question is weird and I think actually probably not a question you should ask anybody in their off-season because it's just so vastly different per person. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to address it. Okay. Because I want... It's got no relevance to anyone else, but I also want people to see that, like, we don't just have you on no food. Yes. Like, um, so what What pa- calories are you on in your peak bulk at the moment? So I'm currently on 3,000 calories. Which is quite a lot for your height, too, because yes. you're not, like, super tall. I'm only 163 centimetres. Yeah. Like, Josh likes to put out five foot nothing. Um, so <laughs> that's nice. Thanks, babes. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so 3,000 calories is a lot. Um, yeah. I definitely struggled a little bit, um, like especially quality calories too. Like, mm, like I think shit. you sort of go into that mentality of like, I've got all these calories to work with, you know, I can, I can, I can afford to go get KFC and McDonald's and all that sort of shit. Um, but it's not, I think I've probably only really found my groove within the last couple of months. I'd That's say. so normal though, coming out of mm. comp because you think about it, you competed September you know, and then you have here with Christmas. Yeah. It, oh, exactly. Mm. People go, I want to do season B because it avoids Christmas. But then exactly. You've got all these events, temptations. Um, as you mentioned, like there's a lot of food focus that comes out. Mm. And, you know, I had to reassure you as well and many other competitors that like reversal is hard. Yeah. And that no one does it perfectly. No. no. I, I reached out to a couple of people as well, um, like around the gym and in nice. our friendship group and stuff. And yeah. Just asking, like, have I blown like that? I think I asked you that a couple of times. Like, I feel like I've blown out, and you're like, shut up, mm. you know, like. Especially with how lean you got as well. Yeah. You yeah. look at, you've got to look at a competitor's body fat gain in relevance to their conditioning yeah. from where they came. So if you've got a yeah. bikini competitor and she's gained 15, 16 kilos, yes, you probably gained a little bit too much mm. for your division. Yeah. But wellness is different because you were so lean. Like, what do we get you down to? I think it was just below 8%. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, that was my body fat percentage competing. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking insane. So, you had like the little crazy lines all over the place. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so like it's been an adjustment, but mm. like now I think I'm definitely and like finding ways in which <clears throat> that I can get my calories in without feeling sick. Yep. feeling full you know because that's yeah that's sometimes that's the biggest struggle yeah and like i've never eaten this much in my entire life like in terms of you heard it here guys in terms of tracking you know yeah, of like, course um, and when but that's the thing when you're tracking 
you know, eat, consuming 3,000 calories, like, within protein, fats, carbs, yeah. the way that it needs to be, with yeah. your fibre as well, mm-hmm. it's actually fucking hard it's, to do. Yeah, yeah so I've, I've been finding ways, like, of a mo- morning, in a morning, of a morning, <laughs> of a morning, I'll have a smoothie. <laughs> yep. You know, um, easier to, to digest. Correct. Um, and in the morning, the GI tract's more active, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, a couple, I've, like, I'm so, like, all right, every two hours I need to be eating. Yeah, otherwise if, if you miss it. Mm. And I've also found, because I'm a big snacker at night time. Mm-hmm. Like, I love my, like, when I'm sat on the couch, doing whatever I'm doing, I eat. Like, that. that's that's my biggest downfall. Um, so I save, not bank or save, but a lot of my higher um, calorie, me- dense meals are in the evening. Yep. Because that way I'm going to bed full, um, feeling satisfied, wake yeah. up in the morning. You get to eat some of the things you enjoy too. Mm. You get to have that sort of habitual satisfaction. Mm. Because at the end of the day too, like we could all, you know, we could dictate to people and say, look, when you're in a surplus, you know, eat this way or eat this way. But behavioral eating comes into it, cultural, Mm. you know, social influences. So it's, this is why I hate meal plans. Because I'm like, put someone on a meal plan and they're like, oh yeah. And then they're like, yeah, but... I really like doing this and this, and mm, then I wouldn't mind being able to do a little bit of this. Yeah. yeah, and so it's like there's just no freedom in no, that, and no. so I think when you yeah, it's weird because people think meal plans are easier. I actually think macro tracking is harder in a sense for both coach and client because we've got to constantly be like, okay, how do we get this back to where it needs to be, yeah. or if it deviates, or yeah. where's a solution to this part yeah. or whatever, and and then it's almost like fine-tuning yeah over and over yeah. and over and over again I think there's pros and cons to both That's doing right. meal plans yeah. and macro tracking when they're I, I think in like the last couple of like weeks where you're having a couple of macro changes and calorie changes in prep mm. Mm. a meal plan could be easier in the sense that you don't have to think that's right. It's because of the decision fatigue that's yeah. involved in having yeah. a change of food. Absolutely. Yep. But then also in the um, different schemes of things, like I know for me, I pretty much ate the same thing throughout you my really whole did. prep. And um, just only really altered the portion sizes. Even stuff like um, something I did myself was like through prep, very similar. I had these, the same, like different foods across the day. Mm. But then as in, let's say for example, I'd had oats for breakfast and then I had crumpets for morning tea. Mm. I would swap the crumpets for an English muffin. Yeah. And then I would swap the English muffin for like sandwich thins. Yeah. So it's like you're just slowly, slowly just chopping out calories. Like, but the, yeah. the meals stay the same. Mm. Just the calories get smarter. Yeah, exactly. And like um, little things like swapping out like rice for spotlight, you know, more Correct. volume. Yeah. Um, Is that something you learnt in our coaching time together when I was like, yeah. hey, stop eating rice? <laughs> yeah. Because like, you I, see bodybuilding and it's yeah, all, chicken, it's all and chicken, rice, chicken and rice. And you're like, oh. Like, like now I've got so many calories, I'm having rice. Yeah, of course. But that's because I like rice and yep. I, I like the feeling of feeling satisfied after I have rice. Also, the like the carb release from rice mm. is epic. And because my carbs are high. Yeah. You know, um, like I'm over, I'm on over 400 grams of carbs You a day. wouldn't want to be eating a shit ton of potato on these calories. So, you ha- and you have to think smart. Like, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of like feeling sick and feeling so full that you just feel bloated and yuck and gross. Mm. Um Rice is a better alternative, in my opinion. Agreed. Yeah. Mm. And even, like, you could switch from... Because typically brown rice is recommended, but if mm. you start to feel too full on brown rice, you can go to white rice, basmati. Well, I really enjoy sushi. Sushi rice. Sushi rice, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the but you wouldn't see yourself eating that dieting. It's like, it's, no. you know... And it's just... I think that people have to understand that there's just carb swaps, basically. Mm. Your protein, protein and fats... Protein pretty much stays the yeah, same. Yeah, protein and fats are very similar. Mm. And obviously keeping fats down when your calories are so high... You're like, why the fuck are there fats in oats? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I don't understand. Mm. I just want some peanut butter and I can only have 10 grams of it. Yeah, you're like, oh, is it even worth it? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, Mm. that's right. So, yeah, there are struggles of surpluses. I mean, I remember being on 3,500 calories at the peak of my bulk. And the reason, this is is why I hate talking about calories, right? Mm -hmm. I think I was doing 5,000 steps a day, if that. Yeah. You know, and like your steps think they're just like seven. Yeah, yeah, around seven. Yeah. But, like, the reason why there's a big difference between mine and Chloe's calories is our height. Yeah. So, I'm taller and I just have a naturally slightly higher resting metabolic rate. But also, we have different goals. Yeah. And, like, 
just, it could be any reason, you know, and like I was still gaining, like yeah. I was, you know, I think I had 75 kilos at the height of my bulk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I probably would have kept going, mm. you know, would have. I was going to say, yeah, because I'm sitting around 74 at the moment. Yeah. Um, which again is the heaviest I've been in a long time. But this is kind of like your homeostasis. Like mm. I've noticed in our check-ins and stuff, I don't know if you don't mind me up, oh. but like. <laughs> the people want to know. <laughs> it's, I've noticed the last few check-ins, it's been like, it's been pretty steady. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, we've found that spot. Yeah. We've found that nice mm. spot where like. You're, and you're saying, I'm feeling more balanced with my food and yada yada. And it's like, that's when you know you've reached. And homeostasis yeah. is just a fancy word for like happy place. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, 3,000 calories. But to answer the question, 3,000 calories. And the person who asked that question, <laughs> uh, she's, <laughs> she's very much a person who, because no one knows who it is, but struggles with more calories. Yeah. Um, look, I'm going to be honest with probably going to increase them at some point mm -hmm. you're like yeah, you. lovely. <laughs> but not yet yeah the no. key is in in a surplus phase is finding where you can get strength increases mm -hmm. performance increases if the person is overly satiated there's no point yeah. you know if you're feeling full all yeah. the time if yeah. you're not as hungry on those calories yeah. especially with the fiber requirements and everything mm -hmm. um and the fiber requirements is just the more food you eat you need more fiber to match that because it helps to prevent cancer in the bowels. So if we have like low fiber diet and high calories, the issue mm. with that is then that we have carcinogenic properties of foods being absorbed into the gut more, like because we don't have the fiber to buffer that. So yeah. that's why people go like, why do you have to eat so much good, for good yeah. food? Well, like, I'm eating um, at least a serving of fruit or a serving of vegetables in every meal. Yeah, exactly. Um, Good for overall health as yeah. well. And like you haven't been getting sick or anything. No. Well, my whole household is sick at the moment and I'm the only one yeah. that doesn't have it. Yeah, legit. Because you, oh, that's right. You got COVID in prep. <laughs> oh. Early stages of prep, I ended up with COVID. Um, <laughs> I had a lot of ups and downs with prep. Did, I ended up you? with an injury. Yeah, you tore your... My glute. Glute. Medius. Yep. Which as a wellness competitor, ain't great. And, and you know what? It was a, both, weirdly enough, like the timing was good and bad in the mm. sense that it was close to show. So we weren't really worried about atrophying in that time that we had left yeah. until show. But also that was, it created so much anxiety for oh, you. Yeah, because yeah, um, I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to be out. Of, like posing, I think, was the biggest thing. Yeah. Trying to tilt your hips up. So they're in the, like your back pose when you're in so much your pain. pelvis and all that sort of stuff. Like. If you were like considering, you were like, I don't know whether I can go through with this. And I remember just being like, nah, we're not pulling out. Yeah. I remember just like refusing to take no for an answer. And you weren't saying I'm going to pull out. You were like, you were dabbling with the idea of like, you know, yeah. should I can keep going? Yeah. And I'm like, we're going to physio rehab it. We're going to yeah. fucking do this. Yeah. We're just going to avoid your glute for the next, you know. Yeah. And I just knew you'd come out of it. And you yeah, did. did. You were so strong. I think that, I, yeah, I think it was only like, what, like two, three weeks? Mm. where I was really restricted and but like I got it would have felt like forever though yeah in prep. like I think I spent like three days where I didn't hit my steps yeah. and then after that I was like all right enough of this shit mm. um, yeah but you know what I think like it's really good to hear this stuff too because in prep people think that like bad shit only happens to them mm. No. Like, no, Chloe got hit with COVID, an injury. There was something else in there as well. I can't remember what it was. Oh, there was a bit of sickness at the start as well. Mm. But it was like, you know, <laughs> as a coach as well, you can't be like, oh, of course this would happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it, shit does happen to every single oh, person in prep, absolutely. 100%. And you reassured me, you're like, <laughs> not to undermine you, but you're not the only one. I know, and it's. I hate saying that because it mm. does invalidate. But but, but it, it's not. No, it's what you need to hear, though. You're yeah. Like, it's almost like, all right, I'm not alone. Like, the end goal is still in sight. You think about it. If you're in prep for twenty, thirty, forty weeks, and mm. the preps are getting longer, do you think that life just pauses? No. Yeah, exactly. And just stops for you. Like, oh, mm. sorry, universe. Um, don't give me anything bad. Okay. Yeah. I'm busy. Yeah. I'm busy doing shit. But, you know, <clears throat> and it's it, like, and then you throw in like work and home and. Than being because you're a mama, mama. like it's a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a lot, but it was worth it. If your relationship survives a prep, it can survive anything. Yeah, well, Josh and I were only pretty fresh. I know. Yep. I was also very mindful of that through the time too, because I was like, I don't want to become 
the bad guy in this situation because yeah. like obviously coaches can we can like you know people can be like oh you know that coach of yours is just making you do toxic shit it's like, well i'm not i'm trying to fuck from i think it helped <laughs> having having josh have that knowledge that's right like he without him i wouldn't have made it through my prep and if anything like you know you told me some wonderful things and i was like you know in check-ins just being like yeah like he was so happy I, yeah. I kept saying like it makes such a big difference having a partner who's supportive I can't yeah. tell you how please tell Josh I'm really grateful yeah. for him and he's a part of this because yeah I think he was like the third you know like there was that triangle and mm. and I honestly don't think that it's just coach and client yeah I know that no, no. I think it's ev- like everyone like I, I support group yeah like um like my parents, mm. like they help me out so much with Sienna, mm. you know, like they're at the show as well. Yeah. Your mum was like crying when she you was won. So, I saw this, like she showed me the video <laughs> and like as I'm walking, I'm just like, ah! like in the back, you just hear <laughs> came and sewing. cuddled me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So lovely. But yeah, no support group is so important. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have shitty people in your life, I, 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 this actually sounds so brutal, but I, I, I stand by it. If you have shit people in your life who don't support your prep, it wouldn't matter if it was your prep. It wouldn't matter if it was Anything, another thing really. in your life. It mm. doesn't matter what it is, whether they think it's toxic or not. Like, it's the thing that makes you happy. Prep decides who should be in your life. Mm. It sounds so... I think that's why I'm engaged. Ah, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, if for those who don't know, this happened pretty recently too. Yeah, right? November. It's beautiful. Yeah. Stunning. It's bigger than mine. Aww. Um, And I think since Alex has seen it, he's literally, <laughs> he said, <laughs> this is all in jest. He has said, he's like, I think I might need to get your bigger time. <laughs> You're like, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 you seen Chloe? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Jo- thanks, Josh. <laughs> um, no, nah, yeah. but like we're all really close, hey. Like our whole like Josh and Alex are like. Oh, like, I think they're too close. I know. To be like, honest, literally it's a bit last gross. night, Josh's phone was like blowing up, and I was mm. like, "Who's messaging you?" It was like ten. I know. At night. I did the same to Alex the other day. I was like, "Who the fuck is messaging you?" Yeah. And it's Josh spamming Alex with free So I was like, "Whatever." Yeah, literally, <laughs> bro. Yeah, <laughs> they're it's, worse than us. Yeah. Like honestly, I reckon they communicate more than we do. They, they do, and they honestly, like, they have a bromance that we will ne- probably never, never. understand. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's just... I, I'm, I'm really, ha- like, I am very grateful for, like, you guys. And, like, because Josh is from the Gold Coast, you know. Mm. He moved here knowing pretty much only me. Yeah. And it's been so nice to see him sort of find his groove, find his people. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. He fits right in. Yeah. And I kind of knew that, too. Like, when, yeah, I, I th- have this thing where, like, and people, I'm so sorry if you're a client of mine and you're not in my friendship circle. It's not because... It's yeah, like, you don't even go here. It's not that I love you. It's, it's just that I'm going to know when, if you slot in. Yeah. And also what's appropriate. Like, there's a lot of couples in our friendship circle. Mm. And so it's hard. Like, we don't have a lot of singles. Yeah. And it's not because we don't like our singles. It's just that it feels a bit weird when we go to events and it's like all couples. Yeah. You know, all the birthday stuff and everything. Mm-hmm. And there's some singles there, but we've got some singles and yeah. they're, they're so like, yeah, it's just whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're grateful too. Mm-hmm. We have not had a huge friendship, friendship circle like this, mm. like either of us, it's yeah. probably since we were in school, Yeah. you know? Yep. So it's, yeah, really nice. And they're all from the gym. Everyone's yeah. from the fucking gym. Yeah, I know. We're all just <laughs> gym junkies together. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next question. Um, We'll get through all of these. <laughs> well, this one we're going to keep really short and brief because I don't, I don't want to harp on about it too much and because it's not in good taste to do so. <laughs> but we need to address it because we have, we have not addressed this. I haven't even addressed this and I, I think at the time if I had addressed it, I would have said some very inappropriate things. <laughs> good job it's like six months later. <laughs> oh man, I would have just got myself in hot water. Yeah. And probably you too, but... Yeah. Because we're both fiery people. Oh, yeah, I'm an Aries. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Saggy, but I don't know what that means. But mm. <laughs> I'm guessing... Oh, wait, I am a fire symbol, aren't I? Are you, what's an Aries? Is that air? No, we're fire. Oh, we're both fire. Oh, fuck yeah. That's maybe why we get on so well. <laughs> get we on burn like a house on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just make the fire bigger. Yeah, we just like, we're just <laughs> bad for each other. Anyway, yeah. so how did you feel... I don't know how to word this. How did you feel, if, for those who don't know, I'm pretty sure most people would know if you were there at the show, mm-hmm. about what happened at ICN? Because, okay, let's just paint the scene, right? ICN, state titles. You've gone on stage for the first time in the first time as division. Mm-hmm. You've won it. Okay. And then 
you've gone on again. And there was women who go into the first timers and rookies. They go into all, and like the yeah, time you have the option to be out. For those who don't know, um, you have options to go into different categories. You can. Um, I don't, is there a limit on how many categories you can go into? Eight with ICM. Yeah, it's a lot. Yep. Um, <laughs> so first timers, you went into because it's the first time competing ever. There was a lineup. I think probably like seven or eight chicks yeah. in there, maybe or something. It, like it was a big category. It was huge. Hmm. And some of the girls that were in first timers were also in rookies. Mm -hmm. So you've won it. There's like a second, third, fourth on podium. We've got pictures of it. You know, we know who those girls are. There were some of those girls also in rookies. Mm -hmm. You went into rookies, mm -hmm. won it. Now, the feeling of euphoria for you in that oh, moment. I was in disbelief. And these are your first, first places. Yeah. These are your first places as well, yeah. you know, let alone yeah. first places. Yeah, no, I was in disbelief. Like, uh, it was like, holy shit, I've done it. Mm. you know I've done it mm. and then almost I was like oh and then you sort of dabble in the idea like could I be taking out over all mm -hmm. you, know, you sort of dabble in that idea especially with two first places yeah like mm. and also when we did the math so here's where it comes to mm. the thing we did the math and we looked at all the competitors and I was like you've just competed against every possible wellness competitor that you could compete against yeah. you know and when you end up, end up in overalls You've already you've already beat all of them on yeah. stage in first time as rookies. You've, and, and we hadn't changed anything. The uh, divisions were so close together. Mm. They were like what 10, 15 minutes apart. Like yeah. the difference was just minimal in the way yeah. of like we didn't change anything. I think I had some salt and that was about it. You looked pretty much exactly the, like. In fact, I can't tell the difference between your division photos yeah. and the overall. Mm. So there was very even your posing. Everything was exactly yeah. the same. I I could have taken pictures of you in the first timers and the overall, and it, I you would have gotten confused. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, at that point, I mean, describe the emotion. You know, I, I was fucking stoked. Like, I thought, oh, I going into it, I, you know, no one ever expects their competitors to win. No. I always tell your competitors, don't expect to win. We always work off that pretense. Mm -hmm. But I knew Chloe had something incredibly special. I looked at her. I looked at the other competitors. I was like, look, if it was me, I, you know, I'd give mm. it to her. Not, not undermining biased. anyone else. Not, yeah, no, yeah. not bias and not undermining. Mm. But, I mean, honestly, if you look at the photos, Chloe yeah. looked insane. Mm. You know, very, very much a standout physique. Um, crazy legs, you know, massive legs, you know, smaller upper body completely yeah. suits that yeah. division criteria. Um, and going backstage, we were just like pretty hyped. Yeah, we were. Okay, fuck yeah, let's go. Super excited, so, hyped. Yeah. Um, almost, it's not like, I don't think we got overconfident. No. I think we were just kind of That's trying to figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. We still stayed humble, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not like we're going backstage and going We're like, ha! <laughs> <laughs> Beat you all, bitches. Yeah. No, yeah. we did. And, like, the wellness competitors were all really lovely. Like, yeah. there was oh. no sort of cattiness. I mean, I, like, interacted with some really lovely yeah. women. Yeah. And so then the final moment, we went on for the overalls. Mm. And I got pushed straight out. To the edge. Yeah. Yeah, which was really hard because I think as well with your posing, we hadn't really, like, we'd figured that out, but as in, like... Because you'd already gotten the two first, we were just like, what is going on here? Mm. And then it was, it, and the thing is in overalls, you don't get places. So we don't even no. know how close it was between you and the overall winner. Yeah. But, and then what happened? We didn't get it. Who got it? <laughs> yeah. Fourth place from rookies? Yeah. Yeah. Who you beat by three places. Mm. Look, like, she looked incredible. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Like, and again, yeah. like, she's actually a really nice girl. Yeah, lovely. But it's a bit shit. Mm. Like, it, it was, like, yeah. It, it, you you want to, I went into it being, like, all right, don't expect it, don't expect mm. it. And it's, it's. It's almost like you're teased with it, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's dabbled in front of your face. And, like, you and I were saying before, I think with the sport, it's so hard to nail on the head at the moment, especially yep. in women's categories, you know, mm -hmm. um, across the board with every federation. There's a lot of controversy mm. happening in all directions. Like, what are you looking for? At that moment as well, like, for us, and, and this is as far as, this is from my opinion, honestly, like, as a coach, as if I was to be judging, because I hope that I'd like to judge one day. I've got too many competitors and fucking shows to judge. <laughs> I like to judge an NBA. I really yeah. would like to judge an NBA. Um, that moment felt like a, a fucking slap in the face with a wet fish. Mm. It was in that there's no denying. No, you should don't need to lie about it. It, yeah. it didn't feel good. No, no, it was horrible. Like, felt poo. Yeah, <laughs> it was like I, 
you then sort of second guess. And you weren't the other only girl too, because there was another girl there who had also beaten her. Yeah. Like another two girls. Yeah, exactly. Had also beaten her. Yeah. And it was just like, what? You almost second guess yourself. You know, I remember I came off the stage and I said to you, what did I do differently? Nothing. You didn't like, do anything wrong. What, what did I, what, like, why? We compared photos, we looked and we looked and we looked mm. and I was like, I, and even other people we showed, we oh, couldn't yeah. see. I had a lot of people reach out and be like, that's, what happened? Yeah, that's not fair. But, um, yeah, I guess that's all part of the sport, you know. Bodybuilding, um, bodybuilding judging and marking often isn't fair. No. No. And it, and it doesn't justify it. Like, it no. doesn't make it any easier. No, no, this, absolutely not. To those who want to compete, if you have trouble not, uh, like, if you have trouble when things don't add up. Yeah. And you go, you'll like, struggle. This, yeah, you'll struggle. Because, like, obviously in a game of whatever, like, it's easy because it's point systems, yeah. it's this, it's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, don't go into bodybuilding with an idea that it's predictable because it's not predictable. No, It's no. very subject to change. Yes. And so we didn't. We didn't ask for feedback. We both simultaneously agreed. Yeah. We didn't want feedback. Well, we knew we had MBA coming up as well. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want you to get inside your own head no. for that. Mm-hmm. No. And to be honest, I think the physique that I put out on stage for MBA was better than yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. You were more confident. Yeah. Your second show is always better as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, you dropped as well. I think you dropped yep. a kilo. Yeah. You, sometimes we get really fluidy in peak week. Like no matter what happens, we'll get fluidy because we're just anxious and stressed, nervous and yeah. stressed, and we're not sleeping properly and everything like that. Um, but um, yeah, like I think I I wanted so badly after that moment to put you in a ball and give you a crown. You know what mm. I mean? And hug you and just be like, "That's your crown." Yeah. <laughs> because I was like mum mode. Like yeah. I was just like, I think the winner looked incredible. I do. I do think she had a great physique. Mm-hmm. But like, not not even coaching bias. Mm. Like, if you weren't my client and she was, I'd be like, ah, oh, yeah. Chloe should have had that. And I've mm. done it before. I've seen I've seen other girls who've just nailed it on stage, and they got a third. And I've looked at them and I've gone, what the fuck yeah. is happening? Yeah. So like, I, there's been times at shows, honestly, where I've gotten up and I've yelled. <laughs> Yeah, fuck this shit! <laughs> Jason's probably like throwing shit at him. Why a shut up? <laughs> but it's yeah. it's like a sport. You get so involved in yeah. it, so invested. Well, yeah, because there's so, such a long time of preparing yeah. for that moment. Yeah. So and it is the the thing is judging and judges and individual people marking people's bodies and physiques. It's I hate saying this. It's subjective. It's not mm. an objective sport. It's subjective. No. They can turn around and go, you know, what well, we don't want to have this as the winner as a criteria because we want to make sure that we're differentiated from other federations mm-hmm. and that, you know, that they don't then make the mistake of because some for some federations they want to go. Well, this is our version of wellness. Yes. You know, this is our version of because whatever. Because it's still a new and upcoming. Division They're ironing it out in na- the natural federation specifically. Mm. Um, which very grateful for introducing. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really hard to pinpoint what they're actually looking for. Yeah, yeah. That even they don't know. Yeah. Because like, then they do, but I think they're trying to use each show to decide that yeah. as well. So yeah. it's like it's almost like you guys are the guinea pigs. Yeah. So and as as a first time competitor, sometimes that can be hard to wrap your head around. Correct. Hundred percent. Yeah, mm. and a coach as well. Yeah, absolutely. It would make Especially if you're trying to so mold hard. off. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to mold off the previous winner. Yeah, usually, and that's what good coaches will do, in in their own way though. Especially with new divisions. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> I had the first wellness winner for for ICM. Yeah. And people go, how how would you achieve that? Fifty um, percent accidental. Yeah. You know, not as in like. Heidi was incredible. Yeah, she but had like, the foundations, yeah. Had the foundations, all of the stuff. But 50% accidental and 50%, I think I know this is what they want, you know, mm. because of all the description and everything yeah. like that. And then you try and replicate that and you do replicate it or you even do go one better and then it flips again. Yeah. And you're like, ah, stop flipping. Like, because yeah. then, you know, then you try and follow it again the next year and then it's like, it, it's honestly, it's a never ending fucking chasey game. Mm. So. Yeah, coaches and clients have a really hard time with new divisions. Wellness is a really hard one to nail. Just like bikini is a hard one to nail. Yeah. Like, people tell me what's the hardest division to win, and I would say bikini. Yeah, because it's so, like, you don't want to be too soft. You don't want to be too, too hard, hard. Too muscular. Too muscular, like... Too square in the waist. Yeah. Posing like, I has give, to be on point. I give my... Like, I remember when I first, like, 
looked into the bodybuilding, you know, I was like, oh, bikini competitors, you know, like. Oh, they, they, they don't do, work they, they do train like pussies, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they, but that's the thing. They have, they have to. to train and like a yeah. certain, there's been, I've seen bikini competitors have to like tone it down, down yeah. and chill out. Yeah. Mm. I couldn't do that. Mm. And it's hard for them too because it's like, for me, like my, my body shape, like I would never be able to be a, comp- a bikini competitor. Like never. Or figure. No. You could try. I don't. Take have, years. I don't have the body for that. You've then. got this tiny little waist and mm. you're just so petite through the, through yeah. the shoulders yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So like I give my props to them because it's so hard, you know, it's like finding that balance. Like I know for me as a wellness competitor, I can train balls to the wall and That's right. it's fine. You know, for them, it's like, I don't want to train too hard because I don't want to get too big, but mm-hmm. then I don't want to be a pussy and not train at all. And then just look like an everyday human being that doesn't even train. Correct. Yeah. It's a hard balance. Mm. Wellness competitors though, like honestly, you're sadistic. Yeah. You I think serious, you have to have... You have serious issues, Chloe. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Nothing I haven't heard before. <laughs> no, I have serious issues as well. That's why That's why we get along. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, uh, I've seen your weights, I've seen your training and yeah. I'm like, <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. It's just insane I find, how strong you are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good. Um... I'm feeling I'm feeling very strong. Let's Josh see. would feel very threatened, I reckon. Oh yeah, you could literally kick him and kill him in one kick. Just right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'd have a lot to say about that. He'd be like, no, <laughs> no way. What's funny is it's like he's like, no, I'd fight back. <laughs> yeah, he literally would. He would. Well, his, your legs aren't as big as hers. So I'm pretty sure kickboxing fight. Yeah. My my bet is on Chloe. I'll just I'm get right. him in like one of those like Muay Thai positions. I'm just like, a, I'm in like a Josh hate mode. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Josh. <laughs> he's just gonna be like. I know where you live. <laughs> yeah, he's going to listen to this and be like, Alex, <laughs> help. <laughs> Defend me. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on. What's, thing, what's one thing you would change about the fitness industry? Ooh. I don't know. I, I think the fitness industry is ever-changing, mm-hmm. you know, and it's really hard to pinpoint one thing that I would be like, yep, definitely want to change that, mm-hmm. you know. Um I think the stigma around, like, bodybuilding. Like, I know before I started bodybuilding, um, I looked at bodybuilders like, you know, they're pretentious. They Mm. All they do is look at themselves and pose and all that Mm. sort of stuff, Um, like yonky doodles ago. Um, And I guess for me then being in that position and being like, well, no, this is my goal, you know. This is what I want. Yeah, you know, like, you enjoy this, I enjoy that. Um, so I think that would be probably like up there to one of the things that I would like to change, like the perception about, um, the sort of person you are if you're a bodybuilder. Yeah. Um, like I had a, yeah, just people that like look at you a bit different. Assumptions. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're a stuck up pretentious look at me sort of. Yeah. But other than that. The way I look at it though is that like, because someone actually said something similar, a client the other day messaged me and said a family member again no one knows who this is a family member or not a family member i think friend family i don't know said bodybuilding is toxic Mm. i mean it can be yeah like anything can be toxic if you have too much of it i was gonna say you make it what it is i think honestly for some people it's for me it saved my life Mm -hmm. wholeheartedly bodybuilding saved my life you know i was suicidal yeah and until i started establishing a healthy relationship with food which did actually still come from bodybuilding yeah I, I don't think I would ever made it. You know, I hated mm. myself prior yeah. to bodybuilding. And it's not that I, like, I'm full of myself now or anything like that. The problem is tall poppy syndrome in Australia is still so rife. Um, you know, people just having issues with people liking themselves or mm. liking the way they look. Like, yeah. what's wrong with that? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with taking pride in it. And something that you... Worked for. Worked for. And, yeah. And the way I... And I compared it to this to this client. I said, like, a couple things. You know... Climbing Mount Everest is dangerous. Mm. People still do it every every day. Yeah. You know they attempt to. Yeah. Um, playing sports, you can get injured. You know, there's all sorts of downsides to everything that we do in life. And the reason why I think people are so against bodybuilding is because it's so visual. So it's something that you can see. Yeah. Like, it's and, so much in your face. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a difference between being self obsessed and image obsessed and actually having something that keeps you grounded. Yeah, I think like people just. Um, like neglect and demise 
having confidence. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. You know, like I look back to when I was like starting to lose all that weight and stuff like that and, you know, I'd be posting photos on Instagram just like not flaunting what I worked hard for but, you know, being proud of that. There's nothing wrong and with you, wanting and to you, show off something yeah, that you've worked And you get the, why are you plastering this all over me? Why do you care? Yeah. It's like if you I, don't like it, fuck off. A lot of the issues people have with, because, like, I, you know, like I've been doing this for years, posting pictures of myself in lingerie and bikini mm. and even through pregnancy embracing that the whole process of just the different changes of the body and like you know i'm sure there i'm sure there are people out there that see my shit and go oh she didn't. you know they get on a little high mm-hmm. horse and it's like then don't look at it yeah don't look at it um it doesn't hurt other people no. that sort of thing is like people are like bodybuilding min, 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 there i'm like yeah cool why is that any of your business mm-hmm. And the other part of it too is that usually it comes from people that you wouldn't want to live the lifestyle of anyway. No. Like figure out where the criticism is coming from. Yeah. Is it coming from someone who's a full-time smoker and, yeah, you know, drinks every weekend mm. and, oh, it's toxic. Oh, I'm sorry. Everything I'm doing is toxic and everything you're doing is completely fine. fine. Yeah. Um, I think that it's a double-edged sword. It can go wrong. It can go, it can backfire as we were okay. talking about before. You've got to catch it before it does. You've yeah. got to watch yourself. You've got yeah. to make sure that you're not obsessing. You've got to try and find... And this is something I encourage competitors to do and I've even said to you is like find that balance between the bodybuilding world and like normal life. life. Yeah. Which is hard. Oh, fuck you know, Because you spend so long special like making sure those... Tw- like, I think my prep was like 26 weeks. Mm. Prep and bodybuilding, getting up on that stage is the only thing you're think of, thinking mm-hmm. of. Nothing else. Hyper focus, yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden to not have that anymore, you're like... Fuck. It's like dropping off the face of the earth. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, what What do I do now? Mm. Yeah. And you sort of, especially being a first timer, mm. you know, I think the next time I, I compete, which we'll dabble on a little bit later, mm. um, it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. You know, yeah. you sort of know what to expect and, and yeah. Yeah. That's good. So yeah, the fitness industry would be the toxicity, I, I, I mm. suppose, in the, in the industry yeah. and getting rid of that, the stigma attached to bodybuilding. Um, so we'll, uh, we're going we're gonna to chop this into two vlogs podcast, by the way, cause we've got more questions after this, but mm-hmm. the, the final one for this, for this segment, how much do you love your mummy? I love. <laughs> this Thanks, is a quick, man. This is a question. <laughs> <laughs> I love my mummy a lot. It's a question no. from the crowd. Like I said before, like without my parents and, um, I wouldn't have been able to get, mm-hmm. like, even when I was going through all that shit, mm-hmm. when, like I said, um, when Sienna was first born, like, without them, like, they've seen me completely broken. Yeah. On the ground, like, in the hallway, like, mum, me and mum sort of talk about it every now and then, mm-hmm. you know, me literally curdled up into fetal position in the hallway mm-hmm. of their house, just sobbing, mm-hmm. like, completely broken, and, like, without them and their constant support, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be in the position I am in today. So, yes, I love my, my mummy very much. She's lovely. Yeah. She really is. Mm. All my interactions with her have been very positive. Yeah. And she's also supportive of me as well. I don't know whether I... She reached out a couple of weeks ago and said thank you to me. Um, it was really lovely. Yeah. She's just a really, yeah, kind yeah. And, and obviously very generous human being as yeah. well. Yeah. So. I'm very blessed to have the families that I have. Mm. It's nice. Mm. Really nice to see. Um, so she loves you. <laughs> so, the answer to the question... I didn't force her to say that. <laughs> Mariah's like, <laughs> for the camera. <laughs> Your mum paid me. It's <laughs> yeah. the only real reason <laughs> Mariah got me on here today. Uh, all right. Well, that, that'll finish up the first um, vlog and podcast. We're going to do some more because obviously we want to touch base about what you're doing next and a few mm-hmm. other things that... Because um, this is this usually happens though when I interview people, I end up with like two podcasts, and because we just talk so much shit. But they're the most popular podcasts. My yeah. interview, guys, why don't you like me talking at the camera? <laughs> no, just, I think because it's all, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Please listen to my fun facts. Um, <laughs> educational videos rock. Uh, I'm like that teacher in school that's like, guys, get excited about English and yeah. maths and nutrition. Let's learn al- algebra. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like real time conversation and I, I totally understand this that mm. there's this like innate need for a connection and um but when people watch other people connect yeah. as well I think as well as like people sort of realizing that like ability and stuff yeah. yeah like they're not alone you know like yeah. we as two different completely different people from completely yeah. different 
um, of life have similar Depends. and yeah. um, similar values and morals, and then we Struggles. also have different. Yep. You know, because I'm a figure competitor and you're a wellness competitor, mm. and like I froth over wellness competitors. Mm. Oh, I just love them. I love working with them, and I also love watching them do what they do. Um, yeah. But see, like, I probably will never compete in wellness. No. Because my femurs are too long. I, I would, like, I have smashed my legs for years. And to get that much thickness in my, in my quads. You still have good legs, though. They're all right. They go okay. But it's just, like, understanding that my structure is far more suited yeah, to like figure. Yeah, like said before. Yeah. I'm taller. I've got, I've got a naturally broader. I haven't trained back, like, much at all through pregnancy. And it's still massive. Yeah. Like, so there's just... You know, there's going to be vast differences in physique and divisions, but by the same token, we have those crossovers, which is, um, yeah, like it's even from client to coach. It's wonderful because, um, yeah, we're not like, there's no sort of hierarchy either with coaching no. and client relationship. Like, I'm not above you. I don't, I've, I've said the whole way through yeah. that this is a And you've never better. once made me feel that way? No. I, I, would, I don't think we would be friends. I'm well, always I, very suggestive. Mm. Like, when I say things and I'm like, oh, wait, did I, was I too, was that... Much. Yeah. yeah, like I always I make sure that, that I, like, yeah. I wouldn't have continued to work with you, you know, if, if that was the case, you know. It's not about having control over No. You. It's the opposite of that. Yeah. It's I want you, you to support me and yeah. be a coach, yeah. not a... Yeah, we're there to put you back on the train tracks, not to drive the train. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right, guys, All right. we're back for segment two. One moment. Goodbye. I also need to pee. That's yeah. half the reason I'm <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Just push it on my bladder.